Hey guys, Novi or Prop Washed. I'm going to go over some of the soldering exercises I outlined in my article. To start with, we're going to solder this servo cable onto this breadboard. First thing, clip the soldering cable so you have even lengths on all the ends of the wires. Strip them. You can do this with your fingers if you get the kind of proper soldering cable, or you can use a tool to do it. Twist the ends. Get your arms and hold up the proto board. You want it nice and secure so you can press against it. Insult the, insert the wires into the proto board holes. You want just a little bit of a copper exposed on the proto board so that you can apply your heating iron to it. Now clean the tip of the iron. You're looking for a nice silver tip like that. If it's dull or uh, dis it's discolored like the ends over here, it won't melt the solder and you'll have a, a bad time. <clears throat> Get some uh, solder. And it's pretty simple. You just touch this down to the metal right here. Put the solder in, and it'll float into the hole and secure the wire. And you wait for it to change color slightly. That means it's it's secured. And look, there you go. Now just repeat. One thing you want to make sure you do is when you're inserting these wires, no wires splay on the outside of the hole. You want all the wires to go through the hole. That's the purpose of uh, of twisting them before you insert them. So if you have wires splaying outwards, you'll want to twist them again. Get it tighter. I always like to give a little tug just to see if it's set. And it's not a foolproof way of, of, of checking that, but it's a pretty decent method. At least making sure that you got some solder and if it was a bad connection you would see some play. If it's good, generally it's very secure. Now sometimes you'll have a wire like this that maybe the length is just not quite right. So I like to just have like a little piece of weight. This scissors will do fine. Hold the wire down, just like a fourth hand, and you go in. Solder down. So there you go. Secure it on. This actually isn't a beautiful job just because it's tilted to the side, you can't get access to these holes. But if you look at the uh, joints themselves, it's very nice. The next exercise is soldering on a battery connector. This is going to give you more exercise with applying a, a large amounts of solder and getting a really secure connection on bigger wires. So let's get into that. Uh, when doing battery connectors, I like to use something different other than the, uh, the third hands. Uh, these, these do work fine, especially with uh, XT60 connectors, but they just don't hold it as secure as something like this. You can buy this at Hobby King for about $5. Um, as I said, the, the, the third hands are, are just fine as well. So you stick a XT60 connector inside this, uh, this spring-loaded latch mechanism. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply some solder into the cup on the connector. Uh, cleaning the tip off first. Again, you want, the, you want it to be nice and silver. So you just touch it anywhere on the tip, and then you float the solder in. If you touch the solder on the tip, it'll melt, and then it'll heat up the rest of the cup really quickly. Uh, the trick with this is not to, to apply solder for too long. Now what a lot of people will recommend, and it is a very good idea, especially if you're, you're new at it, is you actually apply a battery connector end to this uh, connector while you're soldering on. Let me go and do that. Alright. The reason you would do this is if you apply too much heat on this pin right here, when you're putting the solder in the cup, the uh, pin will actually melt the plastic that's holding it in place and it'll start floating around. What that results in is when you try and plug these together when you actually have a battery connector, it'll be very difficult to plug in. Uh, as you can see, Newer connectors or properly sold connectors slide pretty easily, 
but I'm sure once you've gotten in the hobby for a while, you'll notice every once in a while you'll have a, a connection that's just really, really difficult to press together. All right, after you've applied some solder into your, the cup of your connector, it's time to go ahead and apply some solder to the wire. These uh, larger wires are a little bit more difficult to do with your fingers. Sometimes you can do it if you have some, have some nails. I actually don't like using my dedicated wire desheathing tool for this just because these wires are even too big for that and sometimes it doesn't work. I actually just like using some scissors. Um, you just apply a little bit of pressure, not very much at all, not, not, not necessarily any squeezing pressure. You actually push the, the uh, wire into the, the V there and then you just move, move the scissors up. It takes a little bit of practice, but, but you'll get used to it. This is something that's kind of unique to this style of wire with the silicone sheathing. Uh, most of the wires, I would, I would generally use the, the wire desheathing tool. You want very little uh, end exposed, just enough to fit into the cup and no more at all. All right. So when dealing with this, you want to apply a large amount of salt. Learning how to use the third hands and the, uh, basically learning how to use tools that hold the components you're soldering while you're working on them is probably one of the most important skills in learning how to solder in general. Uh, you'll find if, if everything is secure and easy to, to work on, it becomes a lot easier, the whole, the whole process. So. With these wires, the objective is to get solder on the entire wire. You're, you're looking for what, what I just saw there, and maybe it's not visible to the camera, but the idea is, as you apply the solder, it'll first apply the top part of the wire, and then it'll slowly start floating into the threads until the point where the solder will start blobbing on the entire wire, and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see it. And then when you look in the bottom of this, you'll see that look, there's a blob there on the bottom. That is exactly what you want to see. That might actually even be a little too much. <clears throat> So now that you've got that, you basically want to mate them together. The wire gets very hot when you're when you're working on it like this because you have to apply a large amount of heat in, into the tip to get all that solder on, which means the the wire inside this is getting very very hot. So a lot of times I like to use short stubby pl uh, needle nose pliers like this to hold it. That'll that'll give you a little bit of of grip on this thing. And you, you melt the wire first. Remember, you want to apply as little heat as possible in the connector. So you melt the wire first, then you seat it down in the connector, and you watch. And eventually the connector, the solder in the connector will melt and secure. And what you're left with is a very even solder connection between the wire and the connector. The idea is you want as much solder on the threads as possible, and you want it all made into the connector because you're trying to get as much power out of this connector as, as possible. And remember, our mini quads are running about 100 amps. That will get you more power to the props, more thrust, more performance. So a good soldering job is, is very important there. Uh, just as an FYI, you probably noticed uh, I, I miswired this, this red cable is going to the negative uh, terminal on the battery. It's just because I'm doing practice. In a real uh, connector, you would obviously want the black one to be on the minus. The, by the way, these XT60s are labeled. Right in the tip right there, minus four negative obviously, plus four positive. Alright, let's go inside this other one so you can see it again. You'll see it, it may even start to smoke a little bit as it uh, sinks into the connector. And there you go. Again, it has a perfect joint. That is exactly what you're looking for. <clears throat> I'll bring this up to the camera so you can see. So 
So once you're able to solder on battery connectors like this, thick wires onto a, a regular brass connector, and solder on smaller wires to through hole connectors, I'd say you're very close to ready to build your, your mini quad. So go ahead and get on with it.